Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to find both the area and perimeter of a parallelogram. I do have a couple of examples. One of them does involve fractions because I know that a lot of times students will struggle with fractions or mixed numbers when they are presented in problems. And with area and perimeter, a lot of times you do have to deal with fractions. So it's useful to know how to solve those. So let's start with this first one here. Um, remember that the perimeter, in order to find it, you're simply going to add up all the sides. So if you wanted to, you could just do seven plus three plus seven plus three. Remember that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal to each other. Or you can say that it's two times the base plus two times the side length. So there's a lot of different formulas you can simply just add, or you can do two times your base plus two times your side. So for this one, we would just say that the perimeter is equal to times seven plus two times three. So the perimeter is the outside distance. So when you simplify this, we would have 14 plus six, which gives us 20 feet. For the area, the area is going to be the base times the height. And the height has to be perpendicular to the base in order to find the area. Um, basically what's happening here is you're cutting off this little triangle and if you moved it over here, it would make it a rectangle. So this little piece here would fit right here and we would have a rectangle. So it's really your length times your width. Okay, so for this one, since we look at our base, um, we're looking for perpendicular, we would use seven as our base times our height of 2.5, and we would simply multiply these out. So seven times 2.5 does end up giving us 17.5 square feet. So area is always in units squared, and perimeter is always in the unit. So it's important to pay attention to that as well. All right, so let's look at the second one. We have another parallelogram that has base of four and two thirds inches and a side length of three and a half. So when we're finding the perimeter, we would do two times four and two thirds plus two times three and a half. And in order to make this a little bit easier, it is better to convert this into an improper fraction. So we would do four times three, which is 12 plus two, which gives us 14. So we would do two times 14 thirds plus two times three times two is six plus one gives us seven halves, okay? And for this, I would go ahead and simplify this one. Two divided by two does cancel out, so we're just left with seven here. So we would be left with 28 thirds plus seven. And you have a couple choices here. I could turn the seven into 21 thirds and add the 21 plus the 28 together, or to make it a little bit easier, I can go ahead and convert this back to a mixed number. So we can say that three goes into 28 nine times. Um, nine times three is 27, so we would have a remainder of one third. Plus seven ends up giving us 16 and one third. And I was gonna put feet because the last one was in feet, but this one is in inches. So we ended up with 16 and one third inches. Okay, and then to find the area of this one, again, remember that we have the base times the height, and the height has to be perpendicular to it. So we would have four and two thirds times two, which happens to be the same thing that we found right here. So just to make it a little bit easier, we could just say that this is two times 14 thirds, which gave us the 28 thirds. And I could have just said, hey, this gave us nine and one third and been done with it, but just so that you know where it came from. So we would say that the area is nine and one third inches squared. Okay, so just remember the perimeter is the distance around the outside. The area is how much does it take to fill up the inside. So like if I was painting this, um, perimeter would be like a fence. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.